it is what it is, and I'm happy to still be uh, above ground, so to speak. Oh, I'm so awesome. curious. I have to That's ask, good. what is your business, and does it have to do with music? <laughs> Oh, no, I, yeah, if only, right? That, that's actually my backup career. Is I've, I've always wanted to be a rock star, but no, um, I'm a uh, fractional CFO and exit planner uh, for business owners. Okay. And uh, those are just a hobby of mine that I don't. had the opportunity to work with a family business uh, manufacturer in uh, Lake Mills. And they, it's uh, been a fascinating project because it's um, a world of success and uh, they've been doing very well. It's uh, mom and dad and two sons that have kind of started this Plastics company, and they are have grown every year. They've held on to all their clients, and uh, yet it's just chaos. They are just running. They're working fourteen hours a day. They're just they have no time for strategy. They have no time to. And actually, one of the first things that um, so I went in and looked around and talked to them and interviewed them and asked them how I could help them, where their pain points were, and had about eight different things. And I ultimately asked them, where, where is it that you want to start? What's most important? And also gave my two cents. But one of the fascinating things for me has been one of the things that they identified is that they need a family business charter. So, and what that means is when you take a look at family business systems, you've got the business, you've got the ownership, and you've got the family, the three circle model that came out years ago. And so we've been using that as a, a template as well as some other things, how are decisions made, how is ownership, you know, and, and I'm partnering with their attorney out of Milwaukee to kind of do some of what he has to contribute and we're just ending up with this uh, great discussion and dialogue about how they should be working <laughs> as opposed to how they are and what their priorities were. I also have had the chance to, uh, uh, they had started a traction EOS system on their own and they kind of came to a halt in early 2019. And I had, I've worked with a couple of traction consult one specifically in, in a couple of clients. And so I referred him and he had a call the other day with them just to meet and things went really well. So we're going to start that project. And one of the, one, hopefully one of the things I can do is just really to kind of get them focused and say, stop biting off all this. Cause you're just thinking about what's, needed to be done in the beginning, but then there's this whole execution phase. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that would be one of mine. Great. Yeah. Jennifer. Hi there. I'm sorry. I'm faceless. I have um, pretty bad allergies and <laughs> I'm not, I'm not looking real pretty these days. Um, so I do HR consulting for those of you that don't know me. Um, and I guess one of my big wins was right before COVID. It was probably the last event that I was able to attend. And um, I had started a leadership institute here in my hometown or small, you know, part of the chamber um, in Milton. And we, it was the Milton Leadership Institute. It's like a nine month program where we um, <clears throat> try to develop future leaders more, more like community leaders, but also help them build their leadership skills within their businesses that they might work for. So anyway, I won the Volunteer of the Year Award pick for putting that program together at the chamber. Okay. So yeah. that was that was exciting. Cool. And then I've also just been putting together, because of all this COVID stuff, all the new laws that came down the pike for employers, um, I, I put together a lot of FAQs for several of the chambers I belong to so that that was free information out there um, for people to be able to follow all these new rules and <laughs> laws and giving people time off and safety and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of been my excitement, but I've had some 
good stuff with clients too. So it's been, it's been good. I've been staying busy. <laughs> good. Good. Larry. Good morning. I do uh, strategy consulting. I've used the last six months to uh, convert my business model so that it can be virtual. And uh, that's taken two things. I've had to take all the things that I do and uh, actually um, make products out of them. And then I created a pricing menu so that uh, businesses can go see what does it take to get a strategy um, on Zoom or however. So I have uh, converted uh, a lot of business to, uh, to virtual. And actually my, I've gone over it with all my uh, existing clients and they love it. They, ask, they actually encourage me to raise my prices in a few places, which is kind of weird. But uh, that it, it's been really good for me the, the last six months on a business level to uh, have the opportunity to make that conversion. I also have uh, in my business model a web app for strategy. And so that, that makes uh, virtual strategy development uh, it's designed for remote work, so a distributed workforce. So it makes it really, really uh, effective uh, to do it, do it even virtually. So um, business was slow uh, because everybody was cutting back and all the uncertainty. It's now picking up. So by the end of the year, I expect to be um, okay uh, to finish the year. Uh, so the difficulty in anybody's business model right now is you have to redesign the uh, sales funnel because you have to get in front of people differently than you used to, particularly people you didn't know before. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm also working on a process for that. And on a personal level, it's gone fine because um, my three children and their families all live in, in the area. And I have 11 grandkids and after you know, two or three weeks of everybody self-isolating. We said nobody has anything. And so we've been able to share time together anyway. So. First in um, digital feature writing. And so with some of the assignments and then with Lisa Kennecke, who's a member who's been present in her book that came out. Um, I was a school librarian for 17 years and she's trying to figure out how to get her book with that target audience into middle schools and high schools. And I was in the high school. And um, so we've been working together. And what happened is I ended up needing to write a profile for one of my assignments. I wrote a profile on Lisa. I went to look at educational library journals that I had subscribed to as a librarian and was looking for how you submit things so that I could have this profile of Lisa with her new book be featured in one of the national professional journals. And I went to the editorial board and I had been on the National Association of School Librarians board with two of the three editors. So like I just opened that up and burst out laughing. And to me, it's the best way to do something because I can contact them and ask them to, you know, if they can use or have ideas of how I can get published this thing I wrote for my class. But for me, that's really comfortable because Lisa's who I'm promoting, right? It's like not about me and writing, it's about Lisa. So all those three little things sort of strung together have led to, opportunities that um, now one of the editors who was uh, um, on the board with me and is uh, works with an educational publisher, ABC Clio, and he contacted his agent at the company and they want me to do some workshops and stuff for them. So like it all just sort of, you know, the random things that I like to play around with had a connection and a thread through them that really actually end up being tied together. And I think that, you know, the positive is that we have the freedom to do things that don't necessarily seem like we're on track and focused. And that's what everybody is doing. So it's not like you're out here, you know, being super weird about how you conduct business. It's kind of like a smart exploratory way to proceed. 
happily that's how it seems like people are perceiving it. I feel like I'm kind of messing around. And that book you're talking about, Val, that's the one that Mary Helen referred to earlier, that she right. helped Lisa yep. put that book together. And yep. it's, from what I understand, it's been a smashing success. It is, uh, I think it's such an important book and there's a huge gap um, in that area in school content. And so, um, yeah, I bought a bunch of copies and have been sending it off to people like that editor and other educators I know that I know have a voice nationally because I think she wrote a really important book. And Lisa and I had known each other professionally like 12 years ago. <laughs> wow. Okay, we, I guess we're done uh, with our go around. John, how much more time is left for our group? Oh, 12 minutes. Maybe no. 10, 10, 11 minutes. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> well, go so ahead. I want to know more about your class. So I, I want to contact you after the meeting sometime and and learn more about that workplace dispute class because I am um, one of the things that well, maybe later I'll be saying this, is that um, alongside the pandemic, this whole now focus on some of the systemic racism issues and things that organizations are dealing with, people are focusing on bringing in people to do training about inclusivity, et cetera. And interestingly, uh, there's some conflict that has resulted. And so I actually have some clients that I'm working with around that, which it's essentially workplace conflict um, that sort of the catalyst was wanting to explore some of the policies and things that are in place that are actually prejudiced against people of color. Um, so and that's been, but so I'd love to, Chris, like I said, offline, I don't need to take our time here for that, but um, I'm super interested in your course, your curriculum. Yeah, happy to do that, and it'll be an interesting, um, th that whole topic area will be interesting, and, and I, I think you've done a lot of reading on it as well, Val, in, in terms of uh, looking to sort of hear what's going on, and, and, uh, and, you know, in the professional community, there's a lot of activities that have been generated already to try to get a better handle on that, so that, that's a sort of an undefined area, but uh, you know, workplace dispute resolution is, um, well, we can talk offline about it, but, you know, most companies had in place for years issues to, to resolve it. And it's interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, the uh, EEOC established a committee, a Blue Ribbon Committee to the EEOC now, to um, identify and to eke out um, systemic discrimination, they called it. Uh, and that was in 2008. <laughs> so, you know, even though it's been an issue that's come out recently, uh, it, the issue itself has been around for a long time. And, and what's fascinating, what will be fascinating to hear is whether or not um, the students perceive that their companies have done much about it uh, prior to this. So, because, uh, you know, processes, um, all the processes we're talking about are processes that have been in place at least since the 80s or the 90s, but anyway. So I have a question. Um, I just kind of picked up on the last part of that, but um, you know, what I heard was that Val, you're interested in what Chris is teaching and um, you know, Lisa is an expert in diversity and um, is this something that we could do in the future to create a webinar event on uh, MA, through MABC to have- a conversation with the public about this? I think that'd be a really good idea. I already asked Lisa if she would help the membership team think about opportunities for outreach to a more diverse audience. Because um, Lisa does training in this area for a couple of organizations. So she's super well-versed and articulate in, in that area. I think she is a, a wealth of um, yeah. opportunities. Us I'm going to ask her yes. and, um, um, and maybe Mary Helen and whoever wants to maybe participate, but I think there's something here that uh, we could provide for the public that would be a value that would elevate our membership. 
and specifically you guys. Uh, another name I'll mention, uh, Shalene. Uh, I, I contact her. I mean, she's essentially, her business is dealing with a lot of these issues already. Love to have her involved too. And John, is this um, something we can do? I just thought of maybe two programs. One, maybe Lisa could share some of her expertise and show her book and things like that as one program. And maybe Mary Helen would be willing to do a second program that deals with how to help people to write books. I mean, it doesn't have yeah. to be the full 45 minutes, but it could be about, uh, I, people have ideas that they don't think are worth anything. And maybe Mary Helen can help them to bring those to the surface to say, look at this is a good idea for a book. And this is what you need to do for the steps. And then if you need some help, you know, let me know. This, is, would, this is what I do. I think that's fabulous. And, you know, even though, November is uh, the annual meeting and December we were gonna have kind of a social type thing. I would like to maybe plug um, Lisa into November and Mary Helen into December because I we have to keep sharing this stuff. And I don't wanna sit on it till January. So yeah, I'm really- and, and Val, can you reach out to Lisa and let her know about our blog and let her oh, yeah. know about um, exactly what john had said you know what you what you i wrote it down now i can't even read my writing but i'll figure that out later but basically what she has to offer who her, who her clients you know would yeah, be absolutely but it would be a great blog post also yeah, yeah. So, um i'm not sure the um i'll let her if she wants to build off the profile i wrote I wrote an author profile for publication and, and she could build on that, I think. Um, so she didn't have to start from scratch. But yeah, absolutely. I'll reach out to her. Yeah, so consider that done. Or at, least to, at least to prove it, Val. It's just that Lisa's not here right, right no, now. So right. I want to be sure she's aware of it. So. Oh, yeah. And I'll, she'll want to add some of her connections. So, yep. yeah, definitely. And we can kind of let it expand and it'll be awesome. I'm really fired up about that. Hey, since people are, are brainstorming topics, I have, uh, I have something that's been sitting in the back of my head, not necessarily for a presentation, but maybe a blog post, just going over the dangers of dashboard and yeah. the idea that it, when everybody looks at top line data, the dashboard's really designed to give you the point at which to de dive down into the details and find out the root cause. But everybody, and you see this in the pandemic right now all over the place, as everybody looks at the at top line, um, numbers without understanding the data behind it and the numbers behind it and that's in that applies to business too is so many people come up with the kpis and the dashboards and then they're managing to the numbers and not the behaviors and they're managing to well how come this isn't here but they're not thinking about well what's causing that yeah I and mean, the whole point of having that dashboard is to be a launching pad for discussion and drill down and nobody thinks of it everybody gets caught up in just managing the top line but i don't I haven't fleshed it out, but I just know I've lived with it so often. So particular yeah. I'm going to join another group quick, and then uh, we're going to have about three or four more minutes here, and then we'll get back together. And then uh, let's keep track of that whole concept with Lisa and, you know, Brooke Ryan, great stuff. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Heather, how are you doing? All right, I got kicked off my chat because of the internet. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> well, the chat rooms are going really, really well. I, I couldn't set you up as a host, but I've been bouncing in and out, and there's ideas are just like, whoa. Good, good. I'm yeah, sorry, I, though. As some ideas out of the last session I popped in. Good. And, and I think that first half an hour was great to do those kind of interviews, and maybe the second half hour is the small chats. Uh, you are... Right? So right. Uh, yeah. It, it kind of makes it here in my next stand up. <laughs> so it's a good thing, man. Not like an angry dog. On my spine. It's like, wow. Cool stuff happening right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so how much longer do they have in their chats? Uh, about one or two more minutes. I'm going to okay. check in on the last group and then uh, I'm going to end the chat room to about 60 seconds. Maybe okay. Right, Does I'll, it automatically do that for you? I gotta just trip the switch. And then it, okay. Everybody okay. Up. I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, I'll be here, hopefully. All right. We'll Apologize to my group, it was with Pam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here, where am I? There we go. We're coming back in. Hey, John. I'm just uh, checking in with you. Um, we're going to wrap up the chat rooms in about 60 seconds. And I'm sure you guys probably covered most of what you wanted to cover. Yeah, awesome, John. And Nancy just asked, he said, what, has John forgotten what's going on? We're, we're more than 15 minutes. And I said, no, he probably got lost along the way. No, no, we are on actually right on schedule because the actual meeting starts in uh, two minutes. Awesome. So well I'm going to uh, back out here and then bring everybody together. Look at you, you're becoming a pro, John. Oh, yeah, right, Stuart. I got a lot to learn. <laughs> okay, everybody's cool. I just got to figure out how to bring everybody out of these rooms here. Okay, we're closing them all. We're bringing everybody back in. 60 seconds. Good, good, good. I'm proud of you. Look at you managing all these groups. Yeah, uh, well... I actually spent a minute yesterday kind of learning how it worked. It's like, oh, shit, I got a meeting tomorrow. I better figure this stuff out. Pam, I'm so sorry. I'm in the mountains, and so our internet is horrible. It comes and goes. So I apologize for getting kicked out. Susan, That's okay. That's right okay. when I said hi, and then that I was sound great. Then you Then you're just kind of stuck there. <laughs> I was there in spirit. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, we, we made our way and we did a great job. Good, good. Thank you. I apologize. Oh. I might go out again here. It, and we're in a storm also, so who knows? Oh, okay. Well, that's not good. <laughs> so um, I'm going to share my screen here with people. All right. And... See if I can figure out how to get everybody on board here. Cool. I can see so it, John. That was uh, a pretty cool breakout session because I just popped in and out of a couple meetings and I, in a very short amount of time, got several ideas for two new programs for um, November and December. One on diversity with Lisa and Chris and a bunch of other people. And we're going to talk about openness and we're going to talk about maybe uh, book writing. Somebody said, maybe Mary Ellen can give us some tips on that. So I'm in favor of that. So I'm sharing the screen here a little bit and we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this meeting. And I thank you for your patience. This has been a fascinating month for me because when I approached July, I realized we were at the halfway point and I had to do my own analysis about where are we at at MABC and where are we going in the future. And you may have seen the newsletter, you may have seen my long video, and you know what, I'm not concerned about how long those things are. I wanna share information with the group. I wanna be transparent and I want everybody to know what's going on behind the scenes. And I want you to feel like you are included not only in just as being a member, but what's going on with the organization. So, um, Today, it isn't so much a revitalization as it is, what are we going to do in the future and how are we going to be? And who are we going to be with? And how does that look? And how are we gonna create more value? And how am I gonna reach my goal of elevating the memberships of this organization? And I feel like we're on the right path and I am totally committed to this um, because I need MABC for my business. And if nothing else, it gives me a sense of community and it gives me a sense of belonging. And I think if we all pull together, like I've seen today and I've seen previously, we are going to rise above the challenges that we're faced with and uh, support each other and become a stronger group and uh, have more unity. And it just, it just gives me great joy to be part of this. And, you know, I'm going to start by reviewing our member of the month and you know I haven't known Val Edwards forever but the time that I've known her she continues to surprise me with her depth of knowledge and the things that I can't even comprehend so you know Val I know you're a humble individual but at the same time 
I really want you to take a minute and remind everybody, and if you said it before, I want you to say it again. Help us understand what you're doing. Conflict mediation and team building. Holy cow, has there been a better time to be in that category? So, Val, I want to recognize you for your service to the organization, and uh, thank you for your ongoing level of commitment and participation. And I'm going to give you the floor for four or five minutes, and I want you to share with people how can we help you? Well, thanks. Um, it's, it's been fun. You've already helped me because having the opportunity made me really think about sort of what I have in what I'll call my press kit um, in terms of having something camera ready for someone to use when the opportunity arises. And I, you know, what a great experience because then Mary Helen followed up with a really cool little video clip that she shared with me. And I think she posted on LinkedIn on my happily yeah, um very cool and you know so really a nice opportunity to learn a little bit about you know how how those things all work um so the conflict and team building thing all came out of my background in education so i was a high school librarian for 17 years one of the things that's really translated is that um asking questions and knowing how to keep peeling back until you actually find out what the information need is, is a really transferable skill to pretty much any area. But in managing conflict, um, particularly if it's been allowed to escalate and not been addressed early, then there's emotions and a lot of other things that sort of obscure the actual cause of the conflict. And I think conflict comes, I, so I like conflict. Um, and I'm one of the very few people who thinks it's exciting that I know. Um, but, you know, really, it just means that there's an opportunity to grow and learn and change and improve. That's how I view conflict. So if it's not addressed early, though, it turns into a battle that's negative and ends up being divisive. So um, the whole questioning piece, but also as a school librarian, especially in the high school, right, the kids aren't assigned to come to class with me the way they sometimes are in elementary. I only have instruction that I need, you know, get the information I need to to those kids about how to find information, make sure it's authoritative resources that, you know, those types of things. If I have my colleagues wanting to bring their students to me and see value in that. So that's the team building piece that my program depended on my ability to build a relationship with my colleagues and have them see value in partnering with me and bring their take time away from their classroom to come to my classroom. Um, and so uh, that that's just always been a focus. And one of the things about promoting and having people see the value of a library program is being a leader in your district and your profession. So I had opportunities just like um, what I am so excited about and love being able to take advantage of with MABC is that when there's opportunities to volunteer and be involved, that's when you're building your relationships, you're offering services, people start to see your value. And that's where that all grows from. And that's what happened um, at, at school for me um, on both the, the local, state, and national level. And I just feel that same excitement being involved here. It's one of those things where it, when people invite you to do one, one thing for the organization, you make connections and have opportunities to meet and learn the way, John, you and I continue to learn about what, what we have to offer. And, and the same has happened with a number of people in the organization in the really one year that I've even known you guys existed. So, you know, that's all a piece of it. So, and now what's really happening that we talked about in the breakout group is I'm seeing um, opportunities to work for people and um, with the sort of parallel to the pandemic, this focus now on systemic racism and how policies and procedures um, are often unrecognized and unintentional, but perpetuating um, racist values in our culture. Um, when people are brought into organizations to start looking at how things function and um, suggest and try to make change, there's an opportunity for a conflict to evolve pretty rapidly and to escalate depending on how it's handled um, to a point where it causes a lot of trouble. So that's been an area where I've had an opportunity to have a lot of conversations and focus and, and really to, you know, so for me, viewing conflict as 
it, as soon as you see it as an opportunity instead of immediately a crisis, addressing it before it starts festering and people sort of become entrenched in positions and tie their emotions and their personal sort of values to it and start to feel insulted by the fact that they're in conflict. Um, one of the things that, and I've talked to um, Dan and some other people about the communication piece of all of this. And one of the things that I read recently that really resonated is that we don't communicate for ourselves, right? Your communication is all about sharing for whatever reason with someone else. So saying what they need, you know, saying things how people need to hear it is what your intention should be. So it's very easy to just say what's in your head, but if, that's, if that doesn't help someone understand what you're talking about, you need to think about who you're trying to communicate with and what they need from you because you're, you're only sharing it, whether it's you know, online or verbally or whatever, because someone else needs to hear it. Otherwise, it would just all happen in your head and you wouldn't need to have that outlet. So that's a, a piece that just really ties into it. And um, it's interesting because a lot of times, depending on the issue, it's easy to identify one party as being overly sensitive or one party as sort of willfully not hearing what's happening. And there's a lot to peel back there and realize that um, no matter what it looks like at the surface, there is a nugget in there that is a valid concept that you need to hear. It's not something that can be dismissed. You, and this is, again, back to my library thing. And you just have to keep asking questions and trying to reframe and hear what's being said until you actually get to whatever that catalyst is um, or what if there's multiple. So anyway, um, yeah, I've gotten so much from you guys already because it's the connections and the ideas and the support and the learning from your experiences as much more veteran um, consultants that I've really found a ton of value in in the year I've known of you? Well, the, the two things that jumped out at me there were, I try to live by the principle of non-judgment, which is very, very difficult, but it also gives you a sense of not jumping to conclusions about what other people think. And the other thing I try to teach my children is to see through the lens of the other person, look through their eyes, because you may have a differing set of opinions or a different set of beliefs, but the people that are different than you believe wholeheartedly that what they think is right by them. So don't judge them. Don't, don't criticize them because they're different. You know, and there's a lot of examples of that in the world. And that's just what struck me there is that, that ability to uh, mediate, it's a great thing. And right now I'm sure it's needed more than ever. Um, so thank you, Val. And uh, I appreciate all you've done for the organization, all you do for the organization. And uh, all you do for the business community, it's like, wow, okay, so I'm good with it. I'm going to um, go ahead here and uh, see if I can get to the next screen. See if my uh, PowerPoint will work, but, you know, it seems like it's not. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Okay. We're going to move into the meat and potatoes of our meeting. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the structure of the organization and the future of the organization today. And um, with uh, the help of a lot of people, um, we've constructed this outline of what the organization looks like. Um, when I got involved with Nancy and Pam on the board, it was, uh, there were five or six people and for a variety of reasons, people decided they didn't wanna be on the board anymore. So it was me, Nancy, and Pam. Um, Nancy's the past president, and uh, Pam is the treasurer and uh, keeping track of the business side of things, and I'm trying to work on programming, keep the organization going forward. But it's at this time where we have to help create an opportunity for other people to step up and lead. And I think this is a, an incredible time to do that. Um, with, with Heather's help, we have formed some teams um, programming membership, uh, web and marketing kind of go together, and finance and data is actually another team. Um, Heather, do you have anything to add to that? Are you with us? 
Yes, I'm here. Um, so we took the, the idea of the board members, that's in blue, and we said that these are the four positions that are a must in order to keep the organization afloat. We need somebody in each of these positions. And then the fifth one is an at-large member um, that wouldn't have an official uh, title on the board, but would be able to contribute in, in ways and learn about the board. And then underneath that, we said in green, this is part of that phase two, where we want uh, a program team leader, someone who would help motivate people to uh, support programming, a membership team leader that would help uh, bring value to members, a web team leader, which is different than this previous year. We've, we've put them under finance because that's how all the dues are paid uh, through the web now. So it was important for the finance person to uh, be on that team. And then a marketing team leader, which is really going to focus a lot on the, our LinkedIn and our virtual uh, marketing. Uh, the member at large would try and plan one to two social just fun events um, and could be on any team that they were interested in joining. And then to go under that, under the team leaders, uh, would be everybody else that we would ask um, all MA MABC members to join one of these green teams and do one job one time each year. So that's the structure that we're hoping to continue. We've done this structure this past year as kind of a pilot program. And this year now we're fine tuning it and tweaking it and um, have created uh, some distinctions between web marketing and networking that were kind of muddled. So that's the, the difference in phase two. And then John, do you wanna um, go to the next slide and we'll discuss, um, these are the roles for each of the uh, president, vice president, finance secretary, and at large. And um, I'll just pause for a minute here and let you guys read these. They're very broad and, and general, but um, it, the board would be overseeing big MABC, not the minute, tiny little details and tasks. Um, so I'll just take 30 seconds here. You can look over them, um, see if any are calling to you and you'd be interested in having one for the, taking on one of these roles for 2021. And then if anybody has any questions about these roles, the next slide is gonna kind of detail uh, the team leaders, which would not be on the board. Um, but are there any questions about any of these tasks or these are in our bylaws that are written saying this is what the role is of each of these people. And am I right, John? It's about uh, one meeting a month um, via Zoom and then it's emails yeah. certainly going back and forth. So uh, there is some time commitment in addition to that one meeting, but um, maybe you could speak on that. I am yeah. currently not on the board, so. Yeah, no, it's it's been a fascinating experience for me because I actually joined the organization like 10, 11, 12 years ago. It was one of the first things I did. Uh, a friend of mine who helped me start my business said, you got to get involved in this group for the search engine optimization on the website, if nothing else. And that, he was right. But what happened was, is I spent 10 years as a semi-active, but mostly inactive member. And it was about two years ago where I realized at the point I am at in my life, I wanted to make a new, fresh commitment to MABC um, because I believed in the principles of the organization. And I felt that there was an opportunity for us to elevate the organization and our members. And um, I'm passionate about it, but I understand why people are hesitant to serve on a board of directors because they see it as a time suck and a, and a inefficient way to try to move an organization forward. And, you know, I can't stand red tape and bureaucracy and committees. I just I can't stand it. It drives me crazy because I move fast and I don't want to wait for a committee to coalesce over the course of a month to figure out something that I can decide in 30 seconds. 
but we've streamlined the organization now. And we do meet once a month. And uh, it's been very enjoyable meeting with Pam and Nancy. And, you know, occasionally there's other people that come in. But I don't find it to be a burden. I find it to be a benefit. And I've found it to be an opportunity. Because I feel that if, if I help lead the organization forward, and the organization gets stronger, and we're able to positively affect more people, more professionals, more entrepreneurs, more consultants, more businesses, we will be successful and more successful because of our involvement and, and not have this become a burden. So I've had my ebbs and flows over the course of the last 18 months about what we need to accomplish. And one of the big things we accomplished was gaining back some control over our website, which to me is our communications platform. And then with the help of Mary Helen and Sandra Latham and a whole bunch of other people, we built our LinkedIn and Candy Phelps, is, we started doing small groups and oh my goodness, the energy that I get and feel and the love I feel from the members about helping each other today is unlike anything I felt before. And so I'm not gonna quit and I'm not going to give up, and I'm going to continue to persevere to try to support the organization and to build a leadership team that's sustainable. And I believe, I'm going to put my eggs in this basket, I'm being perfectly clear with you. I believe that if I do right by MABC and I commit to the organization properly, it's going to lift my business. It already has. I've gotten one or two referrals from members of the organization in the last 12 months, some of the best client opportunities I've ever had, first time ever. And, you know, that makes me feel pretty good. And I want to pay it back, and I want to pay it forward. And I'm looking for somebody to help me with some other things right now. And my first place I look is MABC. So I'm super passionate about it, and I'm super passionate about you as, being, as our members. And I don't even see it as like a member. I see it as being part of our business family, part of a team of people. So anytime you participate in an organizational uh, leadership position, whatever it be, president, vice president, finance, secretary, marketing, website, social media, not only are you creating value for yourself, but you're boosting your profile and you're also helping the organization. So that's my perspective and I've shared it with you before and I'll share it with you again. So when you look at the opportunities that are before you, look for an opportunity that's going to lift you up. And John that, oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. No, that's it. Yeah, go I was ahead. going to say, Elam, if, if this isn't quite the step you're ready to take, if we go to the next slide, that'll explain uh, the teams. And basically, these are the tasks that a team leader would be. This is not a committee. You don't have to have separate meetings. You can have separate meetings. You can make it whatever you would like. Uh, but if you look under programming team leader, that was actually John this past year. I was membership team leader. Um, Mike was uh, marketing and networking, which also had web in it. And Stuart was... Uh, networking, which also had some web and some marketing. So they kind of blurred. Incredible so we'll, contributions. Absolutely. So we'll hear from them in a little bit. But um, this is if you were to uh, be interested in being a team leader, basically your job is to motivate other MABC members to take on one job one time for the 2021 year. So if um, you become the web leader, then you look under those tasks that you're looking for people to help with the website and communicate with finance on how the, uh, the finance board member who would be on this team, uh, communicate with them how things are going. But you would be the one who's delegating. You would not be doing all of these tasks. Um, but so, you can do them if you want though, right, Heather? Well, we want to we want to disperse the we want everybody to do one job one time during the year. So I'm not the I best would, delegator in the world. 
and I'm on John about that a bunch that people have <laughs> gifts and we want we want whatever your your area is we oh. want every member to join one of these teams so be looking at these teams and you don't have to be the team leader but we want you to join one of the teams to be able to say actually this is a strength of mine I'll help in this area it would look good on your resume too questions about the teams or the boards board None. Understood. What uh, a great teacher I am. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, you know, um, if you feel okay. like MABC is an organization that you can help um, carry into the future with other people, um, you're welcome to step up and help lead. I understand if you can't completely, because for 10 years I was totally inactive and everybody's at a different place in their life. But if you find that there's an opportunity of interest that's of interest to you and you want to take one thing, it would be a big lift in the organization. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing as long as I can do it. So I'm not like going to say, hey, on December 31st, I'm bailing. That's not the case. I'm going to stay as long as I'm excited about the group going into the future. And I get excited about the group because of the members, because of you. So um, it's not like you're gonna get this dumped on and have to carry it all on your own. But we do need to transition new leadership in just because we need fresh ideas. And John's ideas aren't always gonna be the ideas that are gonna help us move forward. So different perspectives create value. Um, Heather, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I do. I have two people that I would like to nominate. Um, Val, I'd like to nominate her to be the membership team leader for 2021, if she is still willing. And that Mike would like to volunteer to be the marketing team leader for 2021. So um, you don't have to decide today, but think about it. And if you'd like to participate participate in a leadership role um i'd love to have you be part of that team where we get together and uh i think there's a lot more we can accomplish so there's no pressure if, if you don't want to be a leader in the board fine if you want to be a leader in the team fine if you can't do it just take one item because we're going to move forward in a positive direction one way or the other so the more people that we get involved, uh, the greater our organization is going to be. So um, I'm going to just share something with you real quick. Moving on, um, Pam has done just a phenomenal job helping us understand our finance and keep our organization on solid footing. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, financial transparency. And I like this slide Heather created um, because it really boils down our situation. We have about $7,050 in operating costs per year. We are projected to take in $7,000 this year. We're $51 in the red. We are gonna save $1,800 by not having a meeting room and food brought in once a month. Um, our other expense is rescue desk, and I'm never going to give that up because they are the bridge administratively that helps us with our emails, helps me with the newsletters, and now they're going to help train me and others to manage our blog and manage our website content, which has been a struggle and a mission of mine since I got involved because I want us to be able to use that site in a dynamic and fluid way. And this is one step towards being able to keep the content fresh. If I could, I'd revamp a lot of it, but I'll start by just being happy that we have a blog now. And so we're in pretty good financial, financial position, but we're not great. We don't need to make money, I just wanna break even. But I wanna have enough funds so we can do what we wanna do. And uh, you can see our income is pretty tight right now. So Pam, do you have anything to add to that? Are you with us? I am, just, just let me unmute here for a minute. 
Um, I think one of the things that the group could would benefit from is that they don't see the financials regularly. The board does. Um, and as John said, this has been the target this year, which is trying to trying to come up with ways that we can have income equals our costs on an ongoing basis. That's that sustainability concern for long term. That doesn't mean that we're in the red right now because we do have cash in the bank. Um, and right now the cash is sitting at about $9,000. So it's not that we're gonna go broke anytime soon, but the goal is to achieve that sustainable model where we can Co cover our costs with our income and potentially have some additional income to do new ideas, um, take on new initiatives or to expand and to grow a little bit in new ways. And the biggest costs are uh, right now is, is Rescue Desk and some of the costs related to the web. Um, we have a little bit of the ongoing costs related to our meetings, but right now with Zoom that's fairly low. Um, and so really the operational side of our expense, the board costs, um, our, um, you know, incorporation, our legal requirements and all of those things are, you know, not that much. It's probably a thousand dollars for everything related to that. But the web has software costs and it has management costs, um, along with the administrative costs for rescue desk. They're doing a tremendous job. They're doing everything we ask of them to manage the memberships a bit in terms of the web, um, communicating and getting anything out that John wants. Um, and so it, it's something we see as a requirement for us to continue, but we have to find a way that's effective in meeting that. And one of the things I've, I've tried to do for the organization is to get a handle on what our costs are, where our money is, and then to document it, so as we have board transitions, we have a smooth process to carry that information to the new board members. Um, it, it's been a bit of a challenge in the past year to get down and get that all accumulated, but I think in the coming year as new board members and leaders come on board, we will have a much easier way for them to know what they need to do, where they can find the information to be able to do the role. So. I went off a little bit, but that told you a little bit about where we've been and how we've got here and where we're going. It's because of Pam's work that we're in a good position right now. And um, I just want everybody to know where we're at financially and we're a nonprofit and we're doing okay, but we're, we're tight like every organization. So, you know, increasing the member, I think the dues are 60 bucks per year and we have X amount of paying members. That's about what it comes down. That's how we, generate seven thousand dollars a year and then we got a couple of sponsorships there's a web sponsorship still available there's other things we could do but more importantly i want to just continue to create value for the members and for the business community does anybody have any questions on our finances okay if you have any questions uh, let pam or i know because uh as i said we're going to be really transparent I wanted to just touch on our programming history because I think this is important. And uh, thanks Heather for making this little chart up because if you look back over the year at our speakers, uh oh, hold on. Um, I, apparently you can't see them all on this slide, but we have a long list of good programs that we've created over the course of the last year and we're going to have more quality programs going forward. And our program quality is based on members' feedback and ideas. And I got two great ideas today. I mean, Mike's got a great program coming up in September. I could go on and on and on. There's so much talent in this organization that I don't really feel like I have to look outside the organization for speakers, even though occasionally you know, Wayne Breitbart was cool. He did a great job on LinkedIn and it goes on and on and on. So when you think about a great topic that you think is going to create value for the organization, it's an open to go. And we're, we just finished booking out the year for programming. And honestly, I'm going to start looking at 2021 and I'm going to start slotting people in. So if you got ideas about programming, please continue to bring them forward. And if you brought me ideas and I haven't gotten back to you, it's not because I wasn't paying attention. It's because I've got 
million things going. Um, do you want to talk about the membership, Heather? Sure, just to go back to programming though, if you were on that programming team for 2021, then that would be part of the jobs that you would be searching and looking for people to send to the program team leader that would be good presenters. So that would be your one job, one time in 2021. So, um, this past year, John led the programming team and did a great job. Yeah, um, but I didn't do a good job involving a lot of other people. I'll, I, I have a confession. I apologize. But that's why we're in phase two. We're working on it, right? Um, I got to put stuff up when I got it going on and I don't have time to have a meeting. You know, it's like bang, bang, bang. So that's how right. So the same, I'll t I've been the membership team leader for this past year. And um, for September, we, you are invited to bring a guest. We're hoping to get as many guests as we can for our September meeting. And Mike Schuster is going to be uh, presenting on, Mike, do you want to talk, a, give a little three-sentence summary of what uh, a guest would be learning or the members will be learning while they're attending? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the general topic uh, for the meeting is that you're telling a story, but does anybody care? Um, what people are really gonna learn about is how you need to take what you're talking about and focus it around one important concept, some of the neuroscience and brain studies behind how people process information that you're presenting, um, as well as cool. some statistics on how much time you actually have to capture attention, tell your story and establish relevance before you lose somebody. I will tell you it's shockingly not very long. Um, and then how you can take all of that and then really analyze and look at what story are you actually telling and use some tools that'll help you see um, if, you, if you were to take your website or other materials and um, get a visual picture of what story you're actually telling and then some tools and processes you can use to sort of dig down and help uh, clarify uh, your story in a real concise and compelling manner. Thank you for stepping up on that, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as many guests as you can, anybody that you want to extend the invitation to, they can register on the MABC website as a guest and be included, and we'd love love to have them. So we're really going to push September as bring a guest month. Um, December, uh, there was a request when we, back last year, to have some meetings or get togethers that are just for fun, just for us to connect and not really have a really intense in agenda. Um, so December, that is the plan, though if a great topic comes up and a great presenter, we might have two get togethers, then one just for fun and then still focus on content uh, for the month of December. So um, guests are welcome every month though, so d they could come to the just for fun one as well. And then finally, we want to kind of put a little bit of a stamp on our organization and make sure we are really inclusive and that we are welcoming to a variety of people and consultants. And uh, we want to take that charge for the upcoming year and make sure we're doing our part to uh, diversify and support all types of businesses. So uh, that's just uh, for the upcoming 2021 year to have a bit of a focus on that. So if you were on the membership team, you would be helping uh, enhance value for members, uh, attract guests, and making sure that we are gaining uh, understanding and being a diverse and inclusive group. So um, thank you, Heather. I just want to make a note that um, Nancy, are you up for doing our October program on Microsoft Office 365? Yes, I am. I have not gotten back to you. I apologize. No, that's cool. I just wanted to make that happen. Yeah. In November, um, we're gonna. I'm gonna contact Lisa Kanicki and uh, see if she can do a program for us on diversity and inclusiveness, and um, maybe have Mary Helen do a little bit on book writing. And I know we're talking about maybe just having some fun in December, but maybe we can have some fun and talk about book writing too. But, um, you know, you'll see in the slide that's attached, build diverse, inclusive membership. We just have to 
keep our arms wide open and welcome everybody into this organization. So if um, you see anybody that you think might benefit from attending our meetings, even if you just come as a guest, you know, come as a guest. And if you want to join, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But I want people to know that we're open and um, we're going to continue to focus on that going forward. Um, let me see what have we got next here. Networking Stewart, you have been kind of leading that. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are related to that subject. Sure. Thanks, John. You know, one of the things is we met last time, March 12th in person. And, you know, for those that were present, we broke into different groups in each of these different areas. The networking team that I led included Corey Erickson, Randy DePost, Ken Halfman, Jennifer Revels, Jennifer Weitzman. Those were those that were present. There were others that listed an interest in working in the networking team, that being Judy Whalen, Rachel Rasmussen, Dan Lushinger, and Randy Zare. Now, I just want to give a, a quick shout out that we all had great intentions. Everybody kind of jumped into different areas, whether it was speed networking, referral programs, social media, uh, wine and cheese. Actually, Val was not in the committee, but she volunteered to lead that and then virtual connections. And out of this, we went into COVID. And some things naturally evolved in an organic way among that within the networking realm. You know, we've seen part of that today. Uh, John, you're, you're doing an awesome job with the, the opening half hour networking. I know that was uh, an ongoing suggestion and uh, just you got feedback on that and, and doing that, I think, is something that everyone is appreciative of. The other thing that kind of evolved out of that, uh, I, I can't claim it fully, but I, I know that I, I did give a, a strong push in that direction, was the small group breakout sessions that awesome. kind of forces people into that uh, opportunity where you can't hide when you're in a virtual environment. It's all too easy, as, as Lee mentioned in his uh, program, what is 80%, 85%? of people are multitasking when you're on a, a web meeting. It's easy to hide when, when you're in a big group and we've got 22 people still online with us. But when you're in a group of four or five, you really can't hide. And, and that brings out the, the need to network. And that is something that we have moved forward with despite having uh, not been in person. So that's just kind of a, a quick uh, and, and uh, fresh update on, on where we are with the, the um, networking group wine and cheese kind of difficult to do val although you you volunteered to do that uh maybe we can create something virtually where we each have a glass of wine and do it at night and just set the time out there and uh, cheese in front of us and we can share what our pairing is but there, there are ways that we can do that virtually speed networking might might happen also in, in the small group situations what randy did do and, and a shout out to him is he created a referral program and he started with himself in creating a, a an outline of that and sent an email to everyone on, on how that might just look um, so there are some activities that people in the the group have done and just wanted to share and i'm going to pass it on to mike or the next person to give their report update thanks john yeah, Stuart, Stuart. Will, you, will you give a little bit of a talk about the mini series, how Candy started the video mini, mini series, and if we're looking in 2021 or even the rest of this year, what, what other, how that kind of evolved and what we would support in the upcoming year if somebody had another topic that they'd be interested in learning about? Um, yeah, awesome. awesome. You know, I'm happy to do that. What, one, and I think it might have been in a, a January, maybe it was the February. No, it was actually before that. Was it November meeting? It was some time ago <clears throat> when there was the thought about doing videos and using the videos within our business and how that might help us to either promote business or exposure and uh, create just a marketing platform. But there wasn't a lot of knowledge on how to do that. I think it was... Um, a couple of presentations that were done. Can you remind me who was it that, that gave that presentation? There were two individuals within the group. One, one was a professional videographer and one was within the group. That's yeah, out. Dan Poe and Judy Whalen. Yeah, and, and, and when they gave that presentation, it was it generated so much interest within the group 
that I, either I raised my hand or somebody said, it wouldn't be great if we could continue this offline. And then uh, Candy stepped up and said, yeah, I'd be willing to lead this group. And there were a number of other mini uh, committees that were created that allowed us an opportunity just to sign up if we were interested. That led to uh, a field trip, actually. John, you were there. That was uh, awesome. And it, we went to the, the, Heather, I think you were there as well. You know, it, we, we went to the library and saw that there was uh, the, the bubbler, which is uh, equipment that's freely available to any um, library member or community member in Madison. And we took a tour of that facility and found out how we can work with videos for our, our own use. And there were a number of other things that, that Candy brought forward in, in leading that group. It, it met regularly either at the tail end or around an MABC meeting when we were meeting in person. And I know that she's still making contributions to the group through uh, recently uh, having sent an email about some software that's available if you've got um, a Mac or on the yeah. Apple platform. You know, so that is still moving forward, but I know that it was something that gave us all an opportunity just to move deeper into an area of mutual interest. And just one of the, the, the many things that MABC has the capability to do, let's take this journey together, walk down that road together and explore. And, and that's kind of what we did. That was cool. And yeah. uh, I went down and shot an MABC video in the library after that. So um, I just, it's been close. So I haven't been able to get back there. I was planning on becoming a regular attendee down at the bubbler. That's a high tech media lab for audio video. And uh, you, you when things go back, open back up again, I'm going back there, so. I'm but if sorry. other members have ideas or topics on it, similar to video, but let's say it's on taxes or, um, you know, whatever, I think we would love to support that as an organization. So uh, in the upcoming year, especially virtually, we could easily set up other mini series for people to participate in. So the cool thing is take your superpower and create a mini series and let's go with it. And that's right in front of us, I mean, right now. So um, I'm going to toggle this slide here. And um, there's a lot of people that have been involved in the website and marketing. And uh, Sandra, Mary Helen, um, Candy Phelps created the MABC social graphic. We got the blog going. Um, we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg here. And there's more that we can do. And we need to use these three channels to elevate ourselves and raise up awareness of the organization and our individual consulting businesses and our individual entrepreneurial perspectives because these are the platforms that we're going to use. So um, there's a lot of upside to this and a lot of us are good at marketing and there's headroom there. So Mike, Mike was that team leader. Do you want him to talk about that on the previous slide? Yeah, Mike, I know that you've been kind of going on a lot of different directions. You want to comment on that? Yeah, um, for the most part, it's a lot of, I wanted to get some shout outs to the team, the people who have been doing a lot of work. And I found out this week that a lot more work was done than we had even had time to tell each other about. So that was exciting. Um, but yeah, so um, we investigated the use of LinkedIn events. So if you haven't seen that yet, there's start Candy's helping get those set up. One of the great things to do this next month, if you're on LinkedIn at all, is to watch for the new event to be put up and you can invite people within your network directly to attend the event or share it um, as well to sort of your feed um, and just all of your connections. So that'd be a great way to do the invite somebody else or help remind them even if you make the personal reach out um, and it shows up differently so we're going to keep that going for a while see if we can gain some traction um, Mary Helen and Candy have been doing great work working on graphics Mary Helen updated her graphics um, so that's another one when you see that get posted feel free to Thank share you. that that out as well um, Rachel Rasmussen is working with the blog on some general business topics to help get things started. So she's going to start working on some content for us as well. Um, and is willing to help create sort of a guide for people who want to submit content, um, but are struggling with a way to do it in a blog. Or if you haven't done a post like that before, she's um, 
if there's a need, she's happy to put something out. So let us know and we'll get that. We'll get that going. Um, Pam and Candy did the back end work to make sure that all the domains that we own are redirecting properly. They are. Cool. Um, and then Candy's also identified a resource who can help it on an as needed basis with tech or complicated issues for the website with an organization. So if things go beyond what we know how to do and what um, Rescue Desk knows how to do, uh, we have a, a group that we can call on as an ad needed basis to get that. So that work has been done. And then there, everybody's training on the current web platform. So that's, that's uh, we've, we've hit at least one thing on every one of our marketing to do's for the wow. year that came out of that March meeting. So I was, that's exciting news, but we can use more people. And if your one thing wants to be just pushing the events out to your network, that is a big help for the organization too. So yeah. Uh, if anybody has an out. event, we'll post it. And uh, I'm willing to post stuff on the calendar as well as LinkedIn. I mean, we're just getting kind of some traction here. And I'll tell you what, next year in the next six months, it's going to get more and better. So um, that is exciting for me. And I think it's just going to lift the group up. I can't wait to look at the analytics in six months to see how our audience has changed. So thank you, Mike, for um, doing that. And uh, boy, the one small thing really is showing up in terms of our ability to accomplish some of our objectives. Fantastic. Um, thanks again. Um, again, if you want to nominate somebody, go ahead. I do. I would like to nominate Stuart for the a board position. Uh, once the board is nominated, then the board determines who will be in each role. So just wanted to clarify that. Uh, but I would like to nominate him for the board. Okay. I'd like to nominate Heather for the board. Okay. I'll second that. <laughs> That'd be Still cool. Hold it from me. And uh, you know, you don't have to commit today. Just think about it. And uh, you know, if you're interested, reach out to me or Heather or Pam or Nancy or anybody, and uh, you know, let us know what your intentions are. Let us know if, if you, you can't do the board, but you want to be on a team leader. If you can't be a team leader, tell us what team you want to be on. If you can't be on any teams and you can't be on the board, then create some content. You know, it's up to you. You have to make the choice. How, how much do you wanna participate? And if you can't participate, I'm not gonna judge you for it because I was totally inactive for 10 years. So it's fine, just be a member, just come to the meetings. You know, whatever it is that suits you the best, that's what we want for that. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, I was just going to add that the web team and the programming team would still need a lead. Those are the two available. If anybody is interested or feels a strength in uh, web or programming. And John, would there be a way for them to see the, that, those descriptions after the meeting, uh, those two slides of what what the role would be if people wanted to think about it. Is there a way to email maybe those two slides? So How that- about if um, we just email um, the two slides to everybody? Yeah, so then you can kind of look at it and say, well, what is this really? And feel free to reach out to, if you have any questions. Um, we would love to help. I think that could be a rescue desk thing where they can help collate that and send it out and just say, hey, if you want to participate, here's what the opportunities are. Um, does that sound good? Does anybody have any other questions before I close up the meeting here? Not right now. Um, I just wanted to, uh, again, extend the welcome to uh, Shaleen for attending today, and, and hopefully you've enjoyed um, the camaraderie that you can see that the, obviously the organization has, and hope you come back again. Thank you so much. This has been great. Yeah, I appreciate you being here as a guest, and uh, you're welcome to attend anytime you want as a guest or as a member. Um, Thank you. And thanks, Chris, for inviting her. Um, I'll just leave everybody with this thought. We're at the halfway point of 2020 in one of the most historic years of our existence. And uh, you know, I try not to get emotional about it, but I think more now than ever, we need each other. And uh, 
we have accomplished such tremendous things and everybody has played a part in that. And um, I'm just very grateful. And I think there's more that we can do. And my mission is to elevate the members of this organization. And in doing so, we will elevate the organization itself. And I'm in this for the long haul right now. Until I cannot physically do it, I'm going to stay and help in any way I can. And I will continue to function in my role until somebody else says I'm ready to lead. And then I'll be happy to hand off and support that person into the future. So we are going to be sustainable. We are going to be fiscally conservative. We are going to be open to everybody. And we are going to make a difference in the business community. And I want us to pull together to help each other make a difference in our own businesses and in our own lives. Because right now, that's all we got. So um, stay healthy. Um, by all means, communicate with anybody about anything. If you got ideas, you know the gate's wide open. And uh, I want to just tell Susan that we've decided that you're going to be the featured member of the month in September. Um, somebody actually brought your name up as a valued member of the organization, and you've been in this longer than I. So um, I'll be following up with you so that we can do a feature on you like we did for Val today. And eventually I want to have everybody become a member of the month, but I got to work through it one at a time. And then we're going to light this blog post up and we're going to continue to become more communicative so that we can find ways to build bridges to other people. And um, that's it. I'm grateful. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'm going to end the meeting and uh, I look forward to the next time we get together. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, you too. We'll talk soon.